I welcome you. This is our sixth lesson in walking through Paul's first letter to Timothy in the New Testament, 1 Timothy. He's, of course, left Timothy with a huge responsibility. He's in this very large church, the Church of Ephesus, and he's there to confront false teachers, to replace leaders that are more qualified to teach truth instead of the growing error that was seeping into the church. For a young guy, it was quite an assignment for Timothy. And that's why where we're coming right now this week, the second half of 1 Timothy 4, that's why it's so fascinating. Because now Paul's going to put on his coach's hat, so to speak, and just speak directly to Timothy. He's going to, he's going to leave talking about the issues going on in the church and what Timothy ought to do. And he's going to just talk to the kind of leader Timothy needs to be. And it's all going to center around this word, one word, influence. In fact, in the last half of chapter 6, he's going to give four keys to personal influence. And I think this applies to all of us. You may not have a positional leadership title like Paul did and Timothy did, but we all want our lives to make a difference. We want our lives to count. And all of us, if I could just draw some circles here, all of us have what we call circles of influence. Maybe that's your family. Maybe that's the company you work for. Maybe that's your neighbors. Maybe this is the, 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 the soccer team you coach. You're right at the center of all of those. But we all have these circles of influence. How are we influencing the people around us, hopefully for the good. People are always affected by us and the way we do. And we're going to see four keys to personal influence. And they're going to kind of outline around, actually, a little um, a, a little formula. I don't think Paul probably thought it in these terms, but it fits perfectly. Uh, you can't have influence without trust. I mean, trust and influence go. If people don't trust you, it's going to be hard to influence them well. And, and uh, 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 for years have, uh, have, have put it this way, trust, or T, equals C plus C plus C. The first C is going to be character. The second C is going to be consistency. And the third C is going to be competence. You need all three. Your character, who you are, the, the consistency with which you do what you do, and the competence, uh, the ability you have to actually do it. And these things build trust, and trust is what builds influence. This is actually where Paul's going to go. He's first of all going to start with this first C, and that's character. You, you never want to underestimate the power of your example. This is your character. This is, this is who you are. And you know what? Who you are will always take you farther than anything you do. It's who you are. Now, here's how this comes. So, so never underestimate the power of just who you are. If you're living out a life surrendered to Jesus, if you're living out the values that others would esteem to, just you living that out probably has more influence than anything else. It certainly has more influence than bossing people around, controlling them, doing toxic things, building unhealthy cultures around you in terms of how people are treated. It's more who you are. Now, Paul gets at this because Paul, Timothy, had a, tr had a problem. He was a young guy. He was probably only in his early 30s. And, and so Paul says, he, he, here's him with his coach's hat, write to Timothy, don't let anyone look down on you, you know, which would erode your, your influence, whether he's looking down on you, because you're young. And uh, it happened to be that in this culture, 2,000 years ago in the ancient, uh, in the ancient world, uh, age was esteemed. It was associated with wisdom, gray hair, wisdom, age, honor your elders. These were huge, huge values. The problem was that Timothy was hardly 30 years old. And so people were struggling, if I paraphrase their struggle a little bit, you know, they were just struggling with having a pastor that was younger than them. And and yet, Timothy's having to stand up to these people much older than him, He's having to correct them. He's needing to move some of them out of leadership. And, and he, said, he said, Timothy, just because you're young, don't let people do that to you. Don't let, don't let them make you lose the sense of confidence that you can still be an influence in their lives. But instead, instead... Of, of not having age to bring to the table, here's what you have to bring to the table, an example. You're an example for the believers. And your example, who you are, will carry the, will, will carry the weight for you. And then he gives us a list. 
in, in that verse. And it's fun to separate them out and look at them. He said, be an example. You know, you may not have age. They may think you're too young to lead. But look, be an example in the way you speak to people. Uh, do you just snap back? Are you gracious with your words? Do you gossip? Are you self-controlled with your words? People are watching all of this. And in your conduct, that would be your behavior, just the way you handle yourself around people. Especially, I think people watch the way we handle ourselves when we're under stress and uh, when we're in conflict. How do you handle yourself? And in love, do you actually care for people? Or, or is most of what you do to ultimately benefit you? People can tell that. They can smell that. Or, and great leaders who really have influence uh, whether they have a position or not, great leaders always care about the other people, and they're doing it for the sake of the other people. They're not using people for their own sake. And, and faith, what a great word that is, faith. Just the way you walk with Jesus, just the way you continue to trust the Lord no matter what's going on in your life. And in purity, in a very impure world, in a very sexually out of control world, like the world of Timothy, that Timothy lived in, was in, in, in a world where there was a lot of debauchery and and sinful partying and drunkenness and 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 people just combativeness between people and divisions you you live a pure life you'll stand out if you live a pure life even these days and so this becomes like an incredible checklist for our personal character and our personal discipleship he said here's where your influence is it's in speech conduct love faith and purity, by you being an example. Uh, you're not old enough to bring the influence of an elder that people would respect, but here's what will carry the day. The way you speak, the way you conduct yourself, the way you care for people, the way you keep trusting God, and the way you live purely. So never underestimate the power of your example. And then stay focused. This is where he's going to go next. Stay po focused on your primary assignment, your primary assignment, and, and you need to stay focused here. How does Paul say that? Well, until I come, devote yourself. Now, now what, what always impressed me is that as he goes deeper into this fourth chapter, Paul's verbs get stronger. Devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, so the reading of Scripture, to preaching Scripture, and to teaching Scripture. And so this was his call. He was called to correct false doctrine in the church. He had a, he had a very central teaching ministry. And so Paul said, um, this, this is your primary assignment. And, and just keep devoted to it. Don't let things distract you from it. Don't let things get you off base. Stay consistent with it. Remember our little equation, trust equals character. We just talked about that who you are in your life, plus consistency, plus competence. And this consistency, you're consistent. If you're given a job, people learn to trust you're going to follow through on it. They trust that, that, that you're not going to give up halfway when it gets hard. He said, I, I know you've got people disagreeing with you, Timothy, uh, about doctrine, about, about scripture, but you just need to keep devoting yourself to all of those things. Stay consistent. And people, people gain a lot of confidence uh, when the influence of our lives and their lives is just steady. And if you do have a leadership position, it's hard to follow you if you're not consistent. If We, we don't know from one day or another if you're going to show up or, 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 or if you're going to stick with the plan or whether he's got a new creative idea every day and it makes it impossible, impossible for people to follow you. You know, it's just something consistent. And especially when we're going through crisis. Um, I remember when we went through the COVID epidemic. I, you know, I didn't have a lot of answers. I felt, actually, I wasn't that gifted at a lot of things uh, the congregation I was leading needed. But, but people do gain a lot of strength just by your steadiness. You're not panicking like everybody else. You're not caving in to everybody else's anxieties. And you can have an immense amount of influence on people if you're just staying steady, consistent, we're going to trust God, we're going to make it through this. That, that's a piece of, of, of this whole equation. It's your character. It's being that example of a believer 
and then being consistent. You, you keep devoting yourself to whatever your main assignment is. And then thirdly, Paul will say in so many words, pour your best energies into your greatest strengths. And I love this because sometimes we're tempted to focus on our weak. We, we obsess over our weaknesses all the time. Uh, you know, and we put all our energy into trying to compensate for our weaknesses rather than just finally settling down with what are we gifted to do and putting our best energies into that. And that's why Paul will say to Timothy next, do not neglect your gift. He said, don't obsess over your weakness. He doesn't say that. But do not neglect your gift. All of us have gifts. And uh, we have certain abilities God's given us. In fact, he really stresses the God-given nature. And partly of this was because uh, Timothy had been commissioned into ministry, was ordained as a minister, and that's, that involved the laying on of hands, that often involved prophetic confirmations that would be given, but it was the whole community of Christ would, would recognize Timothy as a minister. And so, and so he had a gift which was given through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on him. That, that would be what we would today call an ordination service. And Paul is saying, God gave you some gifts and, and, and put your best energies. Don't neglect them, but put your best energies into your greatest strengths, the gifts God given you. You may not be ordained into ministry, but you have some gifts. What, what are you good at? What, what, is God, what does God give you grace for? When you do certain things what, and, and, and people are influenced, impacted by it, what are those things? I, I think we want to always put our best energies into our greatest gift. Don't waste your best energies just trying to improve your weaknesses. You do that in a secondary way. I'm always working on things I could get better at. But if I sit around obsessed by what I'm not good at, rather than just putting my best energies to what I am gifted to do, um, you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to burn out, I'm going to be drained, I'm going to be discouraged. Uh, the best way to stay energized and the best way to influence others is to, is to not neglect what you're good at. And then lastly, he, uh, oh, just before he gets to the last one, he just does add this. You know, he says, don't neglect. Now he's going to give some power to that word neglect. On the other hand, be diligent. This is a strong word in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them. One Bible translation says, immerse yourself in them. These things you're good at. This is that best energy stuff. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. And you know what? If you're a leader uh, and you're younger, you know, it's good that people say, I've had people say this to me, oh, pastor, you preach much better than you used to, or, or you're just getting better all the time. I've had people actually say that to me. And, and so I always think of this first. Let people, let everyone see your progress. That's fantastic. Now to the last key. Stay self-aware and keep growing. Self-aware and keep growing. This next verse, this last verse of the chapter had a huge impact on my life years ago where Paul kind of summarizes it all up. Remember, character and consistency and competence, you know, your best, put your best energies into what you're good at. That's how trust develops. Now he kind of wraps it all up. And he just says, watch. He said, watch your life and your doctrine closely. And watch it closely. So these two words are linked, closely and watch. And the object of it is our life our lives, and this would be his task, correcting false doctrine. So what you believe and who you are, watch these things really closely. Watch your life. Are you indeed a person of character and consistency? And uh, watch your doctrine. Is there competence? So he just sums it all up and says, watch these things. And then persevere, strong verb again. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. That fascinated me years ago as a young leader. Like, I would like to survive this, and uh, I would like to come up out of all of this, still loving Jesus myself, and those around me to thrive. How could I be that kind of influence? We well, said, just watch your life and doctrine. There has to be, there has to be some self-awareness. And I would just encourage you all to, especially when it comes to watching your life, Sit down for a couple hours with a Bible and something to write on and just write down, like, what it mean for me 
to watch my life. I mean, what are the th vulnerabilities in my life? I just have to keep my eye on. I've done that myself. I've carried it with me for years. And uh, that would be a great exercise. So here they all are. Paul's four, four uh, per keys to personal influence. Never underestimate the power of your example. That's your character. Stay focused on your primary assignment. That's your consistency. Pour your best energies into your greatest strengths. That's your competence. And stay self-aware and keep growing to make sure that all of those things are prospering. So we got a lot to reflect on here today. Like, let's go back to the beginning. All of us have a circle of influence. You may want to talk about the kinds of circles of influence we have in our lives. I quickly listed three or four, but there are a lot of them. And then what, what, what is staying self-aware? That last point, what is staying self-aware and continually growing? What, what might that require of us? I mean, always working on character, consistency, competence. And then how... How can God's Spirit, like where's God's Spirit in all of this? How can God's Spirit leverage our influences for Christ's kingdom? He wants to connect His Spirit with our influence. May God bless you as you reflect on these things. Thank you for being a part of this study today. Mm -hmm.